Hey there guys, my name is Nixium, and welcome to a video where I want to discuss MMORPGs, a genre of games that most likely everybody has tried at least once. From RuneScape to World of Warcraft, chances are you've sunk your teeth into an MMO once before, you put a couple of hours into it, and you either stayed hooked or you abandoned the game altogether. And there's a ton of them out there to choose from too. If you want sci-fi, fantasy, or something in between, chances are it either existed or it currently exists right now in the market. But that's a funny word of choice, huh? Existed. Because you see, many MMOs have come and they've gone. Some silently into the darkness and others loudly into shame. But what makes an MMO fail? What drives players away and why is it that a game like World of Warcraft succeeded so well in the beginning, making it the biggest MMO in history? Well, today I want to dive into just that. This is Why Do MMOs Fail by Nixium. First and foremost, let me just put this out there. There are literally thousands of different reasons why an MMO could potentially fail. Bugs, laggy servers, poor graphical choices, boring gameplay, failed hype, and a whole lot more. Really, you could make a video like this run on for several hours, but I feel there are three primary things that lead to an MMO's downfall 99% of the time. Hell, these three reasons are maybe even why World of Warcraft today isn't the subscription-based titan that it used to be. Who knows? Well, let's find out, and you can tell me what you think in the comment section down below. These are what I call the three C's, and I'll use them to explain why an MMO might fail. The first C is simple, and probably something you might expect, and that's content. Obviously, content is needed in an MMO, otherwise the game just completely dies. A perfect example of this would be World of Warcraft Warlords of Draenor, an entire full-priced expansion with only one major patch released throughout its lifespan. One new raid, no new battlegrounds, and so forth. It was a disaster for Blizzard Entertainment, and subscription numbers fell so low that the company decided to stop reporting its sub-numbers. Maybe that was a purely unrelated business decision to do so, but the timing couldn't have been worse. Warlords was a complete failure of an expansion, and players were moving off to try something else. But in contrast, then there's Legion. Blizzard recognized the failures of Warlords of Draenor and turned things around in many ways in their next expansion. No more garrisons, no more single patch expansions, and no more excuses. They dug in their feet, they released a ton of content all throughout their next expansion, and although we don't have the exact subscriber count today, the population seems to have been saved and has become once more a relatively stable community. What's going to happen in Battle for Azeroth? Who knows? The point is, is that content is very important to an MMORPG. Players need things to do, enjoyment to be consumed, and new achievements to strive towards, whatever. Look at Star Wars The Old Republic, for example. Everybody really enjoyed the game when it first came out, at least from what I remember, but when they hit the end game, there really wasn't that much to do. Players need that goal that lies far beyond the horizon to shoot for each day, and a company that is always giving them new areas to explore, things to do, and enjoyment to be had while they are traveling towards that end goal. Content, the first C of my three Cs, is the most obvious on my list, but it forms the backbone of the other two. So all that said, let us move on to my second reason why an MMO might fail, and that is commitment. Commitment is something that is required from both players and the developers alike. Obviously, developers need to be committed to their game, whether they're MMOs or otherwise. If a game comes out and it remains unoptimized for months after its release, kind of like one particular game called PUBG, <clears throat> then how do you think players are going to react? Sure, they might put up with the nonsense for a little while, but after some time, things become frustrating and people begin to leave. That much is certain, but commitment doesn't just lie in the hands of the developers, but also at the hands of the players. Now let me explain what I mean by that. 
MMOs require players to stay committed to them in order to survive because they're not games that are designed to be picked up, you play it for 10 minutes, and then you put it down. MMOs are meant to be living, breathing worlds filled with places to explore, content to conquer, bosses to defeat, and so on. And all of these things take time. And unfortunately, time is a limited resource in the day. So creating commitment from a player is something that MMOs need to do. It's something that MMO game developers need to be trying to promote in the game in order to create a healthy community. But what would create commitment in a player? What makes little Timmy decide to waste thousands of hours in front of a screen playing a video game? Well, there are quite a few things that are needed. First and foremost, you need something for players to strive towards. Many new MMOs come out these days set in random worlds nobody has heard of, where you play as classes nobody can make sense of, playing as races that nobody thinks looks cool. So how do you get players to play this mysterious, need to give it a chance kind of game? You need to create something for them to work towards right from the beginning. Show players what your game offers down the road. Show them the exciting things that they too can one day have as they progress. Show them the fancy armor, the player housing, the companions, the different areas of the world they'll get to explore, the mounts they can get, and so on. Don't just drop them in the middle of nowhere, give them two abilities, and tell them to kill 10 pigs because after 10 minutes, many people are going to lose interest. Players want a world that they can get immersed in, and unless you have an IP with established lore and locations like World of Warcraft did before its launch, chances are many players are going to struggle to become hooked in a place that they know nothing about. But here's the thing. Always show, but do not give. Don't give players all their abilities right from the beginning or make them super easy to unlock. Don't give players awesome looking armor right from the beginning. Don't let them fight bosses that come straight out of an endgame raid at level 10. No! Let people work up to such a thing. Let the new player feel like a new player, a newbie, and they are slowly conquering the world through their skill in combat, through their professions, and through managing their money and interacting with the community. When a player becomes immersed, that is when they will start to become committed. Because being able to escape into a new world is one of the key appeals of an MMORPG. I remember the first time I played World of Warcraft and experienced this feeling. And it wasn't done because Blizzard gave me a fancy set of armor or a ton of spells back in Classic WoW. No. All I did is I stepped out of that crypt in Tirasfall Glades as a Forsaken and I hit the letter M on my keyboard. And I got to see the map of the Eastern Kingdoms, all the areas I could potentially explore. Then, after hitting M, I right-clicked. Yeah, and I saw Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms. So many places I could go, so many places to explore, so many people I could potentially meet. It literally felt like I had just stepped into a giant world of opportunity. And to make it even better, I then saw players run past me in epic level 60 gear. I saw people go by with their cool tier sets, and I thought to myself, wow, that's really cool. One day, I want to look like that. I want to conquer this world just like these people have, this immersive environment. And that's really cool. And for me, it's a very nostalgic and very awesome memory of the first time I played WoW. And you see, in my personal experience there, immersion and commitment to the game and the desire to conquer, it didn't come from fancy spell effects or fancy graphics or how great your water physics are. Look at the thousands of hours dropped into games like Minecraft or Dwarf Fortress. Do you think these sorts of things really matter to players? Players want to be a part of a world, so make it a world for them to be a part of. Create a living, breathing economy and a need, a need to participate in it. 
Create a system where players need to work together to conquer challenges and create an MMO that rewards you for even the smallest of things. From gathering some ore to make a sword to traveling to a new place to earn some experience, make every choice be rewarding and every decision matter. But most of all, if you want that commitment, if you want that immersion, that's right, you are going to need my final C in my list. And that is the most important part of an MMO, and it is community. The community is the most important element of an MMO. MMOs live, breathe, and die based on their social environment. The moment the community dies is the moment the MMO collapses. As mentioned before, if an MMO is meant to be a simulation of another world, then that world becomes dull, pointless, and stupid if people are not interacting, socializing, trading with one another, making friends, relationships, and so on. Just like our own world today. If a player has no friends to play with in an MMO, what is the likelihood he will be playing that MMO three months from the day he started playing? And if the game doesn't promote a community, how likely is it for that new player to make friends? Now obviously there are some cases where somebody might join a game like WoW or the Old Republic or whatever. They might not talk to a single person and they may play it for years. But for many people, that's just not the case. MMOs need to be group-minded in their design. If an MMORPG wants to survive, it cannot, and I repeat, it cannot be changed to appeal to a single-player minded audience. If you want an example of this, again, let's talk about World of Warcraft. Over the years, WoW has removed its need for groups when questing. It has removed the need to find group members through communicating. It has removed even the need to be in a guild or a raid team to see the endgame content. The game can literally be played without speaking a single word to another person. And is it any surprise why the game has been bleeding subscribers slowly, slowly, slowly since Cataclysm? Is it any surprise why now that Blizzard is reintroducing some group content, group invasion points, quests, world bosses, world PvP zones, and so on, that the community has somewhat stabilized? Personally, I don't think so. I don't think this is just a coincidence. The ability for an MMO to create, maintain, and grow its community is the anvil in which an MMO is forged for either success or for failure. Without it, the game will die. Without the game creating a need to socialize, the MMO will die. Because at the end of the day, the game will just get boring. The mechanics will be learned, the content will be consumed, and the player won't care about the company and its commitment to putting out a patch every month for the MMO. But what they will care about is the people who make that MMO a fun place to log into. And if the game doesn't encourage those kinds of relationships to form, nothing else ultimately matters. You can have as much content as you want, the game developers can be as committed to the game and its success as they want to be, but it doesn't matter. Because if people are not interacting and falling into the world that the developers have created, then it was all for nothing. But that's it guys. Those are my thoughts on what I believe determine either the success or the failure of an MMO. Again. There are thousands of reasons why an MMO might fail, but those three things I feel are the most important. Content being incredibly important, commitment from both the players and the developers, and community being the heart of it all. Creating commitment from the player base, as well as giving people friends and guildmates to consume that content with, or to make content of their own. I know though that some of you guys are going to disagree with some of the stuff that I've said, or maybe you've disagreed with all of it. You think I'm crazy. And hey, 
that's fine. If you disagree and you have your own theory as to why is it that Star Wars The Old Republic, for example, boomed at the launch and collapsed shortly after, why is it that World of Warcraft subnumbers have been in decline since Cataclysm? Why is it ultimately that MMOs fail? Leave a comment sharing your thoughts, and most importantly, share your own experiences when it came to new MMOs that you've played, especially MMOs that you played for a while, and maybe you quit. Ask yourself, why did I quit that game? And let us know below. As always, thank you to my supporters over on Patreon. You guys are great. Thank you to those of you who watch me on Twitch.tv and have heard me rant about this sort of stuff before. And either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it got a noggin joggin somewhere. And I will see you all soon with my next discussion on gaming. See you guys. Thanks for watching.